So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to turn basically anything into a texture inside Adobe Photoshop. And we'll go over every step from turning the image to grayscale, then using levels to really harshen it up to make it a real cool texture, and then how to separate the texture from the background so it's transparent and very easy to apply. And at the very end, I'll just type something out in Photoshop and apply the texture we made to that so you can see how it looks when it's actually on top of something. But for this video, I'm going to be using this leaf as the texture or the thing we're going to be turning into a texture, but feel free to bring in whatever you want. It's just very helpful if whatever you have is a very high resolution image. So this is at 6% on my screen. So this is actually a very, very high resolution scan of a leaf. So as I zoom in here to 50 and then up to 100%, you can see there's a ton of detail on this. This is a very detailed image, which leads to a much more detailed, a much more crisp texture. So high quality is always better. But I'm just going to quickly unlock this background layer and duplicate it so we can compare this to the original leaf in the end. This is not something that you have to do. But the very first thing we're going to do is just hit Control U or Command U on the keyboard, which will bring up Hue Saturation. And then I'm going to slide the saturation bar all the way down to desaturate this image. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you can go to image and then from image, you can go to adjustments and from adjustments, you can go to desaturate, which should be shift control U or shift command U. It'll do the exact same thing as desaturating it with the hue saturation bar. But this way we have a good baseline black and white image to turn into a texture. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can check out the details better as we start to do some of these next steps. And this is the baseline image. So you can tell that it's very, very dark right now. And depending on what you're using for this, your image might look a lot different. But what's important is that you be really thoughtful when you do this to make the changes in this next step so that this thing looks the best it can possibly look. So I'm gonna hit Control L on my computer to bring up levels. If you're on a Mac right now, you can hit Command L, which will also bring up levels. And there's three sliders on the levels bar that we're going to be using. This bottom one controls the shadows, so the more you move this bottom bar to the right, the darker the entire image will go. This middle bar is basically the overall balance of light and dark, and the far right bar is the brights. So these are the three bars that I use to turn something into a texture, and I basically always do this the exact same way. So the first thing I do is I grab this bar on the far right, click and hold that, and start dragging that to the left. And as you can see, it starts to really brighten up this image. And I want to make this as bright as I can without causing really weird white blowouts where it starts to kind of eliminate the lighter parts of this image and just turn them to be pure white. I don't want that to happen here. But that's also a stylistic choice that you can make if you think that's what looks the best. Next up, I tend to take the middle bar and just slowly push that to the right to get the contrast to where I want it to be. And I might also zoom in using Control plus or Control minus or Command plus and Command minus on a Mac to get a little bit better detail. And as I start to move these two around a little bit and kind of push this to where I want it to be, I might also grab this bar in the far left and just kick that up to the right very slightly to increase the overall darkness or the shadows of this particular image. So you can zoom out as much as you want to really get a good idea of how your image looks as a whole. So I do encourage you to do that. Detail is your friend when you're trying to do this, but it's just about getting this overall to where you want it to be by making small little tweaks here and there. And then when you have your image to a point that you think it looks good, just making the call to hit OK and then move on. So I actually think this is more than close enough for what we're doing here. So I'm going to hit OK, just so we have our basic starting point. So as you can tell, this leaf that used to look like this right here now looks substantially different. It's very contrasty. It's much more like you might expect a texture to look. And also, if you ever want to make a texture that's extremely black and white, there's a way of doing that. So I'm going to hit Control L or Command L on a Mac to bring back up levels. And basically to make this as black and white as you possibly can, you just grab this white bar and then you move the bar in the middle on top of each other. So then when you grab the white bar, when these are totally on top of each other, it makes this a true 100% black and white with no variance in between. So if I zoom out here, you can see the overall effect like that. So maybe if you're doing screen printing or something like that, and you don't want any half tones or any little variations in color, that's something you can do. But I actually like a little bit more variation in the textures I make. So I'm going to go back to this state right here. So now we have our basic starting point for this particular texture. 
So next up, what we want to do is actually pull this image off the background. And we're going to do that using channels. So typically, at least on my screen, you have your layers bar right here in the upper right hand corner. And then to the right of that, you should have another bar called channels. If you don't see that, you can go to window and then from window, you can go to channels, which is selected for me because it's currently open. But if it doesn't have a checkbox next to it for you, just click on that and it should open up the channels window. So I'm going to move off this because I do have my channels window right here. And we have a few options. We have RGB, which is all of the colors, red, green, and blue. Then we have individual red, and green, and then blue colors. And since this is already desaturated or there's no individual colors, we can use any one of these that we want. And if you're in CMYK mode, you'd see cyan, yellow, magenta, and black, as opposed to red, green, and blue, but that totally doesn't matter. So what we want to do is just pick any one of these three, or you can even pick the RGB channel, which is what I tend to do because it, if you switch between red and RGB, you can see the RGB one just seems to have a little bit more fullness to it. It has a little bit more punch, which is actually what I'm looking for. But what you want to do is you want to hold down the control key on a PC or hold down the command key on a Mac. And when you're doing that, just check the thumbnail of whichever one of these colors you want to select. So I'm going to select the RGB or the entire color channel right here. So now that's going to select all this and you see that my pixels on my screen are kind of freaking out where all these individual portions are selected. And then I'm going to go back to the layers panel while all this is still selected and active. And what I'm going to do is just make a new layer. So in the bottom bar, there's a page turning icon that says create a new layer as you go over it. So I'm just going to click that to open up a new layer. And then I'll just turn off both these layers behind here so you can see what we're actually doing. But this new layer is still selected. And then I'm going to go to my toolbar and select the rectangular marquee tool. You should also be able to hit M on your keyboard to have that be selected. And once the rectangular marquee tool or any marquee tool, there's also elliptical single row or single column, doesn't matter, because all we're going to do is right click anywhere on our screen and then select inverse. Basically what it had selected was anywhere that was white, it selected that. So if you were to fill that in, it would fill in all the whites to be black and all the blacks to be white and it'd invert the image in a way that we don't want. So what we're going to do now that we inverted this, remember that was this right click and then select inverse is we're going to go ahead and make sure our foreground color is set to black. If it isn't set to black, either do that by clicking this and bringing over to black or just hit D on your keyboard, which will almost certainly do the same thing. It resets your color palette for your foreground and then background colors. And then we're going to hold down alt. And while we're holding down alt, we're going to hit backspace. Or if you're on a Mac, you hold down option and then hit backspace as well. And I think delete should do the same thing. So I just hit delete while I was holding down alt and you can see that it went ahead and filled in this leaf. So now we have the exact same texture as right here, except it doesn't have a background, which makes it very easy to select. So now on this layer, if I hold down control on a PC or command on a Mac and click on this, you can see that it selects the layer of the leaf right here, and then it just has that selected and there's no background white. So we can apply this to whatever we want. And if I go ahead and make a new layer behind this and fill that in with white, you can see that it is indeed the exact same texture as the leaf we had before. Just in this case, there's no background anymore, which is pretty cool. So just to show real quick how this looks, if we were to apply it on top of an object, I'll just make the text tool right here and type out leaf really fast. I actually don't want this to be in white. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to be black so we can actually see what's going on. I'm going to make this much more large because this screen is actually crazy huge right now due to the size. Oh my goodness. That's not what I wanted due to the size of the texture that I was working with. And I'm going to actually really quickly hope I can find something that looks a little bit more bold. This might be cool. This might be cool. That's good enough. I'm not going to spend a ton of time looking for the perfect font to apply a texture to. But now we have this type right here and the texture of the leaf above. So what we want to do is hold down control on a PC or command on a Mac, select the layer with the texture on it so that it selects this. I'm going to go ahead and hide that layer now. And then with that selected, you want to select your layer with your type or your object or whatever it is you want to apply the texture to. And when that layer is selected, go down to the bottom here. There's a rectangle with a circle in the middle of it that'll add a layer mask. And that is what we want to do. So just go ahead and hit that. And then you can see very quickly and easily, we went ahead and applied this leaf texture 
to the object we had. And you might want to spend more time lining things up and resizing as needed, but this is a really rough idea of how this works. And you can see the layer mask right here on your screen. It's going to be this box right here that is selected currently next to whatever layer it is that you apply this to. So for me, this has a T because it's a type layer, but if you plot it to a normal object of some sort, it'll be whatever that layer was. This chain link just links the texture to the text. So if I move it around, it'll always be one to one. The texture won't move around. If you click on that chain link, you can select the mask with the texture on it and then go ahead and move that around so you can see how this looks as I move the texture itself if you want a different appearance. Also, if you select just the texture box on your layer and hit Control I on a PC or Command I on a Mac, it'll invert that texture. So maybe that'll look good, maybe that'll look worse, but it'll just add some potential variance to your texture. So that's something you can certainly do. And also, if your texture is still selected, you can hit Control L on a PC or Command L on a Mac. Once again, bring up levels, and we can do the same thing we did before as far as just tweaking how harsh this particular texture looks. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in how your texture looks, although I'd say Generally speaking, it's better to do this before you apply it because it doesn't always apply it quite as much as you would hope. It kind of kicks it back a little bit sometimes if you try to push it too far, but it's certainly an option to do at this stage, so feel free to do so. But that's really it. You can see how easy it is to go through the entire stage of bringing something in to turn into a texture, turning it into a texture, and then making it really easy to apply to any object you want. So that's it for this video. I do hope you found it helpful. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button to let me know. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Maybe I can help you, maybe someone else can help you, or if you just wanna talk about whatever, feel free to do so. But besides that, thank you so much for watching. And if you wanna see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. I do my best to keep creating new videos just like this for designers. Thank you so much for watching.